Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman Story 2 for 1940. So let's get started. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman, eighth wonder of the modern world. Visitor from a distant planet whose strength knows no limits whose endurance is beyond anything humanity has ever known. We have seen how the child of jor and Lara was placed in the rocket ship and sent on his way to Earth. During the long journey of the rocket ship to the Earth, the child has become a man. The rocket landed in a desert. Superman stepped forth full-grown to explore this strange new world in which he found himself. Today, as our story continues, we find him hovering with his curious power above a quiet highway in Indiana. A trolley car is just pulling up the hill. And as Superman wheels and turns in curious flight, unseen below, a man and a boy come out of the shed that serves as waiting room. Pardon, Professor. Good morning. Going into town. Yes, that's right, John. Taking Jimmy to the fair. <laughs> that is a great show, all right. Well, I reckon you're my only passengers. Uh, make yourselves at home. I'm going to get me a drink of water. All right. My dad. We've got the trolley all to ourselves. Yeah, regular private car. Where'd the motorman go? And just over to the spring for a drink. It's a mighty hot day. You better hurry or we'll be late. <laughs> we can't start without the motorman. But we are starting. Look, Dad. The doors have closed. We're moving. Yes, what happened? Dad, I want to get out. The brakes. Something happened to the brakes. Let's get out, quick. Open the doors. They're jammed. They're tight shut. Dad. We're going faster and faster. We're going downhill. Dad, what are we going to do? Jimmy, come here. The window. Out the window, Dad. Get it open. Smash it. Oh, wait. wait. Yes, Dad, go. No, no, no. It's too late. Going too fast. We've got to, Dad. Look, there ahead, there's a tree. Jimmy. A tree. A tree falling right in the track. Look. Look. There in the sky. It's a man. Why, he's flying. It can't be. It's not possible. Dad, he's coming straight at us. He's moving down. He's turning on the roof. Dad. Quick. Back hold of me. No. Put me down. Let me go. Stop it. One under each arm. Up through the top. Hold on. We're going to crash. Well, we just got out of that in time. Trolley cars are wrecked. Smashed into a million pieces. Where are you going? What are you doing to us? Uh, what's happening? Pull us down. Don't be frightened. You're all right. Got to get you out of there in a hurry. Pulling off that roof was the only way. Now we're going down again. Down. Down. There you are. Safe and sound in the field. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Quite all right, Professor. Getting you and the boy out of that car was nothing. I can't believe it. Who are you, anyway? Where do you come from? I have no name. I come from a world that no longer exists. Here in this world of yours, men would call me a superman. It's a dream. A wild, impossible dream. But, Dad, it happened. We saw it. He flew down, took us under his arms. And out of the car, that's all. Nothing so strange about that. You saved our lives, Jimmy's and mine. I don't understand even now, but I'm grateful. Are you, Professor? Doubt it. Would you do something to prove it? Would we? Anything at all. Then make me a promise. Promise that you'll say nothing at all about what's happened. What? Don't you want people to know? Not just yet. I want no one to know. Except those I help. Will you promise? If you wish. I do, believe me. Then you have our word. Is that all? No. You've given me your promise. Now I want your advice. You want advice from us? You know this world. I'm a stranger. You know the people in it. I have still to find them out. You want to meet men, is that it? Not meet them, Professor. Observe them. Study them. See them at their best and their worst. Know which to help and when help is needed. If you can tell me that... Dad, can we help him? Well, I think so, Jimmy. If that's what he wants. It would mean a great deal to me. Well, my friend, if, if we can call you that. I hope we can. My first friends on this earth. To mingle with people, to see men at the highest and the lowest. If that's what you want, well, now let me think. Now, how about a newspaper, a great metropolitan daily? A newspaper? Well, yes, join their staff. Be a reporter. Oh, but you can't do it in those clothes. Not that blue costume with the cloak and shield on your breast. Gee, you couldn't. Now, Jimmy, these are the cloak and the shield of Superman. If I become as other men, I shall dress as other men. Well, you 
will have to assume some kind of a name. Uh, what do they call you? I have no name. Well, how about Clark Kent? That sounds all right. Yes, why not? It's usual enough. It won't attract attention, Clark Kent. Clark Kent? Yes. And about joining a newspaper. That should give me an opportunity to learn the troubles of men, to know whom to help, and when help is needed. I'll do it. Many thanks to both of you for your advice. Well, no thanks are necessary. If there were only something more... Just this. Remember your promise. Never to reveal my identity. And now, goodbye. I've stayed too long, and I'm off. Goodbye! 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 They're right. Superman must become a reporter. A reporter by the name of Clark Kent. Clark Kent. I'll do it. since Lindbergh, and me short-handed. Oh, what's the use? Yes, sir. Uh, about that man. Oh, send him in. Send him in. Yes, sir. Come in, Mr. Kent. Mr. White will see you now. Thank you. You want to see me? Close that door. Yes, sir. My name is Kent. Clark Kent. What can I do for you, Mr. Kent? Well, Mr. White, you can give me work, I hope. Work? On the paper? Yes, sir. I'd like to be a reporter. No, oh, you'd like to be a reporter. What papers have you worked on? None, sir, but... Oh, I... you haven't. But you think you'd be a whiz. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I can't use you, Kent. You mean you haven't any opening? Not for Greenhorn. I'm sorry if I'm blunt. But, Mr. White, even if I am a Greenhorn, suppose I brought you a good story. And where would you get it? I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Kent. A I... really good story? Such as? Such as the complete inside on the man called the Wolf on the Western Railroad? Uh, uh, what's that? You heard me. Do you want that story? Do I want it? Oh, I should say I do. But look I here. I think I could get it for you. What do you know about the wolf? A little bit. Where did you ever hear his name? In connection with railroad, Mr. White. Oh, stop beating around the bush. I only heard the beginning of that myself yesterday morning. Not a paper in the country has carried a line. And yet... Yet I come in here and talk about it. I think I could do something with it, Mr. White. Now, look here, Kent. Mysterious secret messages have threatened to tie up every railroad in the country, beginning with the western. For a while, the road paid no attention. And then the crack fire on the P&R went off a bridge. Yes, I read about that. And naturally. You didn't read about the warnings because they weren't printed. Weren't printed? No, and they won't be. Not until we've checked all the angles. And then this man, the wolf. Oh, yes, yes, the wolf. Now, where do you come in? How did you get to know the wolf? Excuse me. Say your own white. My friend, tomorrow night, Silver Slipper leaves Denver for the West. It will not arrive. Don't make a difference. Hey, what's that? Who's this? I have been called the wolf. Goodbye. Hey, come back here. Come back here. Wait, wait. Yes, Where did that call come from? I'm sorry, sir. The I'm not saying your pardon, sir, but if that call did come from the wolf, I should be inclined to believe it. Huh? How do you know who that was? If I were you, I'd warn the officials in charge of the silver clipper. Huh? Look here. You couldn't hear that phone. What is this? How do you know who called me? As I was saying, Mr. White, suppose I brought you a good story. The story of the silver clipper and the wolf. I take chances, Kent. I'm going to take a chance on you. Thank you, Mr. White. It's 2,000 miles. You'll have to hop a plane. I'll get there, Mr. White, in spite of the weather. Lord, I, I hadn't noticed the weather. Well, get to the airport anyway. You rang, Mr. White? Miss Smith, this is Clark Kent, temporarily attached to our staff. You'll note I said temporarily. Yes, sir. Kent leaves for the west for the first plane. Get him tickets and a $200 advance. Mr. White, all planes are grounded. That's all right, sir. I'll get there. Uh, take him outside. Show him what he needs to know. Mr. White, I'd like to thank you. Oh, let it go, Kent. Let it go. You get a story and you get a job. You're either clairvoyant or the luckiest guesser alive. Either way, I can use you. But if you miss out, well... This way, Mr. Kent. Thank you, Miss Smith. Nice of you to show me around. Pretty lucky, I'll say. 
hundred good newspaper men walking the streets, and you step right into a job. I say, I am lucky. You wait in here. The ante room of the cashier's office. Well, I really don't need an advance. Oh, I... playboy in disguise, eh? Wait here. What a rotten night. Don't fall out that window. It's 20 stories down. Beautiful view, even in the fog. You wait right here till I get your money. Then I'll introduce you to a few real newspaper men. Plain grounded. 2,000 miles to go. Sorry, Miss Smith. I'm afraid I can't wait. Clark Kent may need a plane, but Superman doesn't. Up with a window, and out. So that was Superman Story 2 from 1940. So if you'd like to subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We'll have another video coming out real soon.